So what I'm doing today is we're collecting some drones because we're going to be doing the first insemination here. I've got a young lady, Alicia, has come to help me for this summer to do the first insemination. We've got some lines that we're going to experiment with and we're going to try and cross with. So we're actually, I've, made, I've cut out these queen excluders and I am put them on in the place of the doors, the mouse doors that go in the winter. And we're now mid-afternoon, so the drones have been out flying and the drones that are coming back are the mature drones that have been out on their flights. It's pretty likely they're mostly mature. So all we do here is sit and wait and then the drones fly back in from their flights. There's one there, feeling buzzing. He's ripe, in they go. Another one there. You can mark them and then you know that the ones that are marked a few days later are going to be ripe even if the weather's rubbish. But at the moment we're doing what we can because it's a new thing we're doing. So Lisa's going to be ejaculating these drones by forced ejaculation. You basically squeeze them and they often just pop themselves and they expose their sperm sac. And then we should be using a microscope to extract the sperm into the insemination kit. There's another one, dead easy. And there's another one. I'm just using a standard collection box here. Um, this one we got off the internet. It's really handy, but what the ideal thing would be to put this back in a colony if you're storing them with some nurse bees with them, and that then enables you to store them because drones don't generally live very long. I'm learning a lot as I go here. I'm speaking to a, a quite a few people who inseminate and it's basically, you need lots of experience. So I'm hoping to learn this technique as well, but I'm at the moment catching the drones while Alicia's inside, taking out the semen from them. Let's go and look at the other ones. There'll probably be a few building up on the other ones now. We are. Quite a few here now, they've just built up. One there. One there. There's a thing on the tip. So can you point to where it is? Just there, mm -hmm. okay. See the white, and then there's creamy, the creamy. Oh, the cream on the very tip there. Yeah, the cream is right. the semen. Because we go and take, extract that off then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Expel the saline, drop the semen down, and siphon it off. And you kind of pull away. That was mucus there, so I'm gonna get that off. Okay. And then, and you touch the semen to the other semen, and you just siphon it right up in there. And how was that? Let's get her in here. Where's she gone? Oh. She's a lively one. There she goes. <gasps> oh no, I'm stuck. I'll have to back up. Look at that. In you go, baby. Up, 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 up. She's in. Where's she gone? goes. So we need to get her in the tube. So what we do is this. As queens have reverse gear. We need to get her in the insemination tube. Back she goes. And there she is. And out comes her butt for insemination. There.
So after the insemination process is completed, the uh, queen is removed from the tube. She then has her wing clipped and she's numbered. And most of the time people number them with uh, these stick on uh, little numbers because it's really, when you've gone to the effort of inseminating a queen with instrumental insemination, you really need to finish the job properly because it's such a lot of work and such a lot of effort to get that queen to that point where you've got those good genetics where you want them. You really want to make sure you can follow this queen through because you've chosen the drones and you've chosen the queen, the daughter, where she, she came from. So you're hoping and you're pretty sure you're going to get a good cross and the result of that queen being inseminated will be a good queen to breed from in the future because you know the genetics. Um, so what we do then is, or what Alicia's been doing and she's taught me, is you uh, clip the wings as I said, we mark them with the dot and then we, we basically put them into small little cages which you can probably see on this video. They then go back into either the incubator for a couple of hours to make sure that there's no complications during, that arise after the process, which can sometimes happen. The odd one doesn't survive, but then we put them straight back into the nukes they came from. Now this is the issue I've had where I, for the last couple of years, I've been rattling about raising queens and doing all this, but I've had this problem this year where I've suddenly been put in this position where I need queens that are five days old because the minimum time for insemination is said to be five days. And that's the time it takes for the queen to ripen her ovaries so she's in a position where she can receive sperm inseminated into her. And in, in the wild, in a normal colony, that's the time she would start venturing out on her mating flights. So the problem is you have to learn how to hold queens. So as well as producing them, you've got to bank them. And banking queens is quite difficult, but the other option is, and I'll be doing this more next year, is you get nukes ready, and as soon as your queen is born or she hatches into the nuke, you then put a queen excluder on the front of the colony to stop her going out to try and fly. But don't forget, she might well fly on day three or day four on the first orientation flight. She won't necessarily mate, but she might go to the A3 just to get her bearings. So for next year, uh, I've got to get lots and lots of nukes ready or maybe we'll go down the Apodeo Road but the other problem we had this year was our nukes were overheating so I made my Mini Plus nukes which were, if you remember, they're the six frame, uh, six frame nukes which are really good because you can split them off a bigger colony you saw me making them up in my other videos and then you can use them to put a virgin queen in but the problem is when you have a excluder on the front to stop that queen flying out before you harvest her again to inseminate her we had a spell of really hot weather and when I mean hot I mean 30 degrees every day and we had colonies that overheated and they overheat because even though they've got a mesh grill on the base of the colony on the, on the on the base there's not enough ventilation and as soon as a few of the drones die in other words a few straggler drones that might have come into that colony when you made it from another one they then block up the front and it's a vicious circle suddenly the colony collapses because there's just not enough room and what you really need in this case is a small nuke with not many bees and then that permits ventilation, that permits the queen to go off and well, to be looked after until at such times as she's ready for mating. As I said before, what we do then is we tend to harvest the queen, take her back into the house, give her the CO2 treatment in the tube. She's inseminated that, that first time she has the treatment, then she goes back into the nuke after that. And then she's 24 hours later, she's giving a second CO2 treatment. So following this, we, re, we basically leave them in the moment we're, we were leaving in these metal tubes uh, overnight so that the queens become fed outside by the nurseries or we put nurse bees in. There's loads of ways of doing this and we're learning a way that works for us. As I said, it's a very complicated process. But once you've got your head around it, it actually is beginning to seem to me a really viable option. Now, this brings me to why inseminate why should we be doing this now when I first started beekeeping I was of the opinion that it was completely against nature and I was completely bemused as to why people want to do this but now I'm doing it what I'm helping Alicia do and I'm learning to do it myself I can see the benefits and the benefits for me are enormous because I need breeder queens if you had if we all had them in our colonies we'd have wonderful bees that were highly productive that were um, you know, good foragers, all the rest of it, all the, all the attributes we like, but we can't, A, afford all those, 
and B, um, really have time to produce them. But if you have a few, then you can collect drones from them, then you can do this, that and the other. So to me, it's going to help my bees, it's going to help my stock, and it's going to help me maintain good lines in the apiary. Now, Alicia's going to be coming back next year to do more insemination, so we'll follow it through and see how it works. And I'll also be posting videos during the autumn, winter, when we're seeing how those queens begin to lay and develop with their brood patterns. Because what we're doing right now is they're reintroduced back into the colony, and we've got to wait for them to start to lay. And a couple of times, because the weather went so hot, uh, we, and also we were learning about insemination as we went and uh, we, well I, I was learning but I've, I've learned that sometimes they do need a third CO2 treatment but it's pretty unlikely but sometimes you can get that with odd weather because the weather has really stressed the colonies and as me as the beekeeper preparing everything for Alicia I've been like tearing my hair out because I've been thinking what's going on but you have to go back to basics you go back to the basics you do and you look at what you've got and you do a restart and I found the biggest problem was the colonies were too strong and the queens weren't happy. But we got there and we, we managed to, to, to get there. We've got probably nearly 60 inseminated queens now over the last few weeks. And we've got them from nice genetics that we think we'll be really happy with. But they're all noted, they're all documented, and we're starting to make kind of inroads into our lines. And now I need to think about the way ahead for next year. But I'm not finished yet. Because at the moment, all my other colonies are all waiting to be split, which I've got to do in the next week, end of. And I've got queens in the incubator, not many in there now, but I've got loads to come up from the cell builders there, and the finishers are absolutely chock a block about 250 cells to cover me for the next hundred, um, the next hundred splits I'm gonna do, because I need to do it because I've got to harvest the honey. It's just gonna be mad the next week, but we'll get there and we'll be, uh, so I should arrive at the end of the season in another two or three weeks with mostly, with probably about 60% um, open mated queens but in the mating station and the other 40% will be probably 45 to, to 60, I don't know how many when the laying's finished. I don't know how many inseminated queens we'll end up with. Because at the end of the year there's always this uh, kind of period where you're just either combining or making use of what you've got and just um, putting colonies together so that they're going to profit from one wheat colony and another wheat colony being brought together and that's how I do all my stuff. I've got my road treatments to get in um, and I've got feeding to start so it's all to do and everything is like crazy so we'll, I'll be posting videos on things like that as well and um, basically I hope you enjoyed this because I'm not trying to describe the process because I am not um, I'm not able to describe it in detail and a lot of people do it in their own way and it's better if you're going to do insemination do at least one course at least it's actually done two and that's what you should do I mean obviously the books the videos everything but there's not a lot online of insemination because it's very very kind of closed and the people that do that earn good money and rightly so because it's a very very skillful process but anyway um, that's it for now and we'll be in touch hope you enjoy the video bye bye